Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're gonna finish off these cassette adapters. Um, got the Bluetooth one here, and also uh, the wired one here. Now, I did end up having to tape up this part to make it nice and smooth, because what I found out was, um, as you guys probably know now, now that I'm mentioning it, and probably didn't realize it before, was that a lot of these current um, modern cassette decks, they detect holes up here to see whether or not, you know, you have a cassette in the cassette well. And with this one, because there's, you know, nothing there for it to detect, it didn't even think there was a cassette. So mm, probably not a big deal if you, you know, if you're putting this in the cassette deck in a car, a head unit, but probably not a good idea in a um in a uh you know normal cassette deck so here's my sony um tcwr 701 es and i'm gonna put that in there and right now it's not plugged into anything but i plan on plugging it into my ipad listening to some, uh, <laughs> you know, like uh, copyright free music here, just so that um, we get some, uh, we can use a source that has both a headphone jack and Bluetooth because my phone doesn't. And not only that, but I'm using my phone right now to record the video. So can't use my phone as a test source. So, You can hear the hear the grinding noise. And we have an alignment issue here. Seems like the right the left side is always louder than the left. And now it's even worse. I have noticed that. It seems like the alignment isn't all that good. Now I push on this side, now you can see the right side being louder. Stick in the middle. And that was the inconsistency I was fighting with when I was playing around with this initially. So, yeah. <laughs> that was fun. Um, here's the interesting thing, though. It seems to work better in reverse. So I'm going to put it in backwards. This is B. So, And by the way, it didn't matter where the wire is coming from. So... It does stop it from turning, but it does actually go the other way. And it's much better. And yeah, you can still mess with it. But it seems to work better the first time around, as you can see. Now, it does the same thing for the other decks too. So for example, so it's not just an alignment issue with this particular, um, you know, deck. It does the same thing for this one as well. Well, this one's going backwards and it's not. If I go forward. Now this one was aligned by a professional, so yeah, kind of, let me move this up a little bit. <sighs> Sorry. Just got so much things going on here. Okay, so. Alright. Push play. Hmm. 
Nothing. Oh, that reminds me. I gotta switch over. Hold on. All right, here you go. So it's, it's the same volume. So I'm gonna raise this one. And I'm pushing it. So alignment isn't all that great with this thing. Try it again one more time. So yeah, I mean, I guess for a quick test, it's, you know, it's not going to be too bad as long as you know about the alignment issue. I might open this up and see if there's anything I can do to make that any better, but I don't know. Does it look straight to you? <laughs> All right, well, we'll see. All right, so check this out. I'm also going to put it in my RX-202. It's a simple two-head deck. Okay. No Dolby, of course. I'm going to lower the volume really quick. Pushing it in just to even out the volume or the levels, I mean. Too loud. Bring it down. See, it's not perfect. So. It's what you got to deal with with these things, I guess. I don't know if the Bluetooth is gonna be any better, but let's pair it up and find out. Now in the instruction manual, it did say to, uh, to leave this in the off position, which I did, okay? And um, it says it's supposed to turn on as soon as you plug, um, hit play. And I'm guessing it's because this, you know, the head contacts this, pushes it down and it turns it on. So I'm gonna push it down here. And sure enough, it does turn on. So let's keep that in here. We'll hit play. You can even see, this even makes a noise. So on my iPad, let's see if it sees it. Here it is. It sees it as miscellaneous. So let's go ahead and cassette Bluetooth. That's what it says. Interesting. I tap on it. It won't let me tap on it. Interesting. Well, this thing locked up. Hold on. All right, this thing is still going. I just reopen this thing. All right, it looks like there it is. I'm going to see if I can pair it up. There it is, connected. Let's listen to this. Hmm, interesting. It will not... Oh, it needs to go louder. Okay. Sure enough. Wow. The Bluetooth one seems to be a lot better. Okay. Right now the volume is all the way up. And it's about the right level. Let's go down one level.
That's not bad at all. I'll go even one more level lower. So I don't know if you guys saw that. That's still too low. One more higher. All right, well, it does seem like the Bluetooth one is better made. Um, maybe it's the wire that's causing the other one to be misaligned or harder to align, but we'll see. Let's, let's check this out really quick. All right, back to this guy. Still too low. I guess certain ones need more volume than the others. Oops, it's not going to the... That's weird, it's not going to the Bluetooth anymore. Oh, because the Bluetooth turned off. Ugh. It takes a while to reconnect. Well, it says connected now, so I don't know why it's not playing. Don't you just love Wi-Fi tech or Bluetooth technology? There you go. Now, I don't have the amp connected to this, so... Does it still mess with the thing? It does. No, it doesn't. This is way more stable. But it's still louder on the right side and the left. So maybe that's a, a head alignment issue, but let's check this one out. This one's connected. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Every time you take the cassette out, it disconnects. So maybe I should leave it on. But, all right, I don't understand what's going on, but it's super quiet now, even though it's at the loudest setting. So yeah, I don't know what's going on here. It was working fine before. And I did have to leave it on so that it um, it stays on while I pull it out. Otherwise, it just turns off and disconnects. So, so yeah, even here, it's really low. I'm not really sure what's going on here. It was fine on the RX-202. So the lesson is inconsistency. <laughs> I can't even do a sound test with these two because just because of the inconsistencies. No better, but again, loudest. Not sure. This is more consistent than the other one though, but now it's just consistently not working. <laughs> what the heck? I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I can hear it, but it's super low. Yeah, I don't get it. It's still playing. So, <laughs> so that's my frustration here. This is my first time using it too. And um, I paired it up and it's not working. Although it was working on the RX. It was working on the RX 202. So let me get back on here. So let me go to take one. It's actually working pretty well too. Better than the other one.
All right, I'm going to do a line out from here to there, and I'm also going to guys give you guys a uh, the you know original direct from here, uh, YouTube directly to Audacity from my computer. That way you can hear what the digital stream sounds like versus what it sounds like through the Bluetooth and into a cassette. And more specifically, a Nakamichi RX202. So, there you go. All right, I had to redo that because I inputs and stuff wasn't recording right so I think I fixed it so let's try it again I'm gonna hit play here and I'm going to hit play here Stop that there, about a minute and 30. And I'm gonna do the same for the digital version so you guys can compare, all right? I'm going to, I just swapped out for this one right here. And I'm going to start it again.
that's it for the, uh, what do you call a wired version. <clears throat> All right, conclusion time. These things are not very consistent at all. You guys saw it, you know, even with the Bluetooth one here that's better built, it is, it was working fine on my JVC and then it stopped working right. I don't get it. But I had a better experience with this one as far as alignments and levels and with this wired version. But then again, this wired version is also a no-name brand that probably cheaped out on a lot more, you know, in the build quality than the Ion, which is ironic to say because Ion, <laughs> need I say more? But I guess having a brand name on it probably made them feel a little more self-conscious about keeping um, some kind of uh, reputation. So if you're going to get one, at least get one of these. But if you need a wired one, they do sell a wired one that is costs a little more at Walmart with a brand name. I forgot the brand name. I'll have to check again. But um, don't get this one. <laughs> don't get this one at all. Uh, I might just open this one up one day and take a look inside to see if, I, if there's any improvements I can make. Maybe... Uh, stick some foam pads in there or something like that to better align this so it's not weird <laughs> but uh yeah as far as being able to use it to test you know like thrift store garage sale and you know like flea market cassette decks and walkmans and whatnot i guess it's the best you can get i mean especially if a regular cassette like this won't work if the belts are bad and what you really want to do is test to see if their heads are working so you don't really have a choice <clears throat> that said i would say get this because you know if your phone it's going to work with all your phones right whether it has a headphone jack or not because all phones these days have bluetooth so this is what you should be getting for um for today i think not only that it's a better build quality so you know this your own risk not only that but you will have to tape this up to give yourself a nice flat surface for those cassette decks that detect um you know the holes up there whereas this one by factory is already nice and flat so, yeah, it's not any rosy uh, conclusion, unfortunately. It's never that straightforward. But, and if you were thinking about putting Bluetooth in your walk, uh, not your Walkman. Well, I guess you could do it with your Walkman. I don't know why, but let's say your boombox. I mean, it works, you know. It may not be the best sounding. But if it's a boombox just to give audio out to your audience that is, you know, like in a picnic or a barbecue or whatever, it's not a bad option at all. Or you can just get the Ion boombox itself and skip this, which is, um, I mean, it's a modern boombox, so it doesn't matter if you take it outside or have it kicked around or whatever, you know, that's why I bought mine. So that's my conclusion for the uh, cassette adapters. <laughs> what, you want a better ending? I'm sorry. These aren't they're all that great. You know, there are always caveats to those things. Um, I also want to apologize for uh, taking a while to have a video uh, come out. Um, I. I don't really have much to do back in the day, I guess, like prior. Uh, so that's why I was able to pound out a lot of videos. And, you know, they were all videos that were made quickly with just my camera. And I added a process to add line in or line out, I should say. So that took my videos a little longer. And now actually I have some personal life things going on. So my videos are going to take even longer. 
I haven't even gotten a chance to touch this yet. You know, I know I made a video about the TDKD True Mechanism. I opened it up. It was a low hanging fruit video, I should say, because, you know, it's just to, just to take apart the thing, just filming me taking it apart and compare. That isn't as involved as anything to do with, um, you know, audio testing and, you know, grabbing the audio and stuff like that. So that is going to be a bit. So um, just be patient on that one. I don't know when I'm gonna be able to make the, the conclusion to that particular video. I know that's disappointing to hear, but it is very time consuming to and more involved, especially since I was saying that I was gonna test out other cassettes, not just the true mechanism to give you guys something to compare with. So uh, this video took a bit too. And as you can see, I was kind of fumbling through um, my first time using those two devices. Um, I was hoping it was gonna be straightforward, but it's not because these things don't perform as well as I remembered it. But then again, when I had these in the 90s, I didn't care, you know? Most like, like most of you guys, I just stuck it in the car into the car deck and just start using it. I never tested it. And the other thing I would love to test one of these days is because this is wired. What if I plug this into the line in? of a computer and then record to this. Well, does it work the other way around? 